a celebration of rainbows and cucumbers in the WNBA, and the party is being hosted by their pretend friends in the mainstream media. Celebrate the Dump Divers! It's a rainbow celebration. The mainstream media, they are celebrating the fact that the WNBA is finally a success. After three decades of being a never-before-thought, after three decades of irrelevance, three decades of facial hair outpacing points on the scoreboard, after 30 years of huge embarrassing failure, the media, they finally have a legitimate reason to celebrate the WNBA. Headline from Time Magazine. How the WNBA set new records with Caitlin Clark and rookies leading the charge. <laughs> Another media specialty. Credit to Time Magazine for putting the extra time and effort into polishing this turd. If you were to believe the mainstream media, the WNBA has finally reached the pinnacle of success. If you were to believe the media, the dump is setting viewership records on television. And the reason the dump has reached this pinnacle, it's because of the elite athleticism and the magnetic star power throughout the WNBA. Once again, the media is giving us a partial truth when the reality is this so-called success in the WNBA, it is an illusion. <laughs> If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. The WNBA has never received more mainstream attention than they are receiving right now. Every morning when I open up my news feed, it is littered with stories about the WNBA. The media, they are pushing this false narrative that the entire league has captured the attention of the mainstream. When the truth is, one player has captured mainstream attention. It's not the entire league. Hell, it's not even the team that she plays on. Most people couldn't name another player on the Indiana felines. The WNBA has not reached the pinnacle. The WNBA hasn't broken into the mainstream. Caitlin Clark has captured our attention. Last night, the Las Vegas Anonymous Faces, they traveled to Minneapolis to play the Minnesota Linkers. Tonight, the Target Center will be sold out when actual basketball is being played in the same arena. That term sold out, that is a foreign concept in the WNBA. After the exciting contest last night, head coach of the Anonymous Faces, the legendary Becky Hammond, she spoke to the media. Well, KC, who won the game? Um, who cares? The people of Minneapolis damn sure didn't care. We'll get to that in just a second. After the game, Becky Hammond sat down with one of the anonymous faces for a post-game press conference. I think it was A.J. Wilson or, I don't know, maybe it was Kelsey the Plumber. Who knows? Who cares? One of the reporters, they asked Becky Hammond about the elevation and the surging popularity of the WNBA. The answer to what's causing this is obvious, Caitlin Clark. Not according to Becky Hammond, though. No, 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 no. Watch for yourself. Well, I think there's a lot of good players in this league. And, and here's, if you haven't been, if you're just a recent follower of women's basketball, this has been brewing for a while. Women's basketball, it's been like at this boiling point, building, building, building. And, you know, our arena was sold out long before Caitlin was coming into the league. First of all, where in the hell were they filming that press conference? That looks like it was filmed using a laptop webcam. I watch almost every post-game press conference with the Weasel Willie Green. The Pelicans, they are one of the poorest teams in the NBA. Gail Benson, she would rather spend her money traveling to the Vatican to see the Pope than paying star NBA players who can actually win basketball games. But as poor as the Pelicans are in terms of NBA, their post-game press conferences, they look professional. Becky Hammond, she looks like she's sitting on her couch with A.J. Wilson and they are getting ready to watch the latest episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. But Becky Hammond, she made a couple of interesting points in response to that question. Number one, she refused to give full credit to Caitlin Clark for elevating the WNBA. According to Becky, the only recognizable face amongst the anonymous faces in Las Vegas, according to Coach Hammond, the anonymous faces, they were selling out games long before Caitlin Clark entered the league. 
<laughs> Interesting. Now, I could take Becky Hammond's word for it, but I looked at the list of people I trust. Becky Hammond, she ain't on the list. The Anonymous Faces, they play their games in Michelob Ultra Arena, which holds 12,000 people. Last year, when Caitlin Clark was still playing professional basketball at Iowa, the Anonymous Faces, they led the WNBA in attendance with 9,500 a game. Um, I'm no expert in math, but I'm pretty sure 9,500 that is significantly lower than 12000 I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather have $12,000 than $9,500. This year, through four home games, the anonymous faces, they are averaging around 10000 a game. We're only 2,000 people away from a sellout. Woohoo! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Becky Hammond wants to talk about all these supposed sellouts when the reality is they couldn't even sell out in Vegas last weekend when Caitlin Clark was playing there. Supposedly, Becky Hammond and the Anonymous Faces, they are the most popular team in the WNBA. They're back-to-back -back winners of the WNBA Finals, which means they haven't had to use the porta-potties for two years since they have won access to the golden toilet and bathrooms with running water. To the victor goes the spoils. If you're the most popular team in the league, you should have no trouble packing arenas on the road, right? If A.J. Wilson and Kelsey the Plumber are truly stars, fans in other cities, they are spending dozens of dollars on tickets to watch them play, right? I mean... Caitlin Clark doesn't seem to have trouble packing arenas on the road. Her game last week in Seattle against the Sioux Birds drew over 18,000. If the star power is truly spread across the WNBA, the anonymous faces, they should have no problem selling tickets on the road, right? Their game last night in Minnesota, <laughs> just over 7,000 in a building that seats over 18,000. There were so many empty sections, the janitors only had to clean a third of the arena after the game was over. But what about television ratings? With the WNBA being a relatively new success, maybe people aren't ready to spend their hard-earned money on the product, but they are willing to give it a shot on television where they can watch it for free. According to the media, the entire WNBA is a huge draw on television. Once again, the media giving us a partial truth. Technically, the WNBA is off to a good start in the ratings. But is it really the WNBA or is it Caitlin Clark? There have been 14 nationally televised games in the WNBA so far this season. Caitlin Clark has participated in seven of them. Six networks have reported viewership records in the WNBA this year. Caitlin Clark owns five of those six records. The seven nationally televised games not featuring Caitlin Clark WNBA averaging 468,000 viewers. That is a 7% decline from their national average last season. Now, to be completely fair, some of those games were on something called ION and NBA TV, two networks that aren't necessarily known for drawing big audiences. But even some of the broadcast television games aren't performing all that well. Last weekend, the New York Liberals, they were playing the Minnesota Linkers on CBS, 704,000 viewers. Easily. Easily the least watched program on CBS this month. Hell, it's probably the least watched program on CBS this year. Earlier this week, I was talking with some of my channel members on our Discord server. It was brought to my attention that ABC bumped the WNBA to ESPN this weekend so ABC could show professional lacrosse. Maybe this decision was contractual and ABC didn't really have a choice. Or maybe, just maybe, ABC thought professional lacrosse would perform better than the WNBA. I don't know. 
In all fairness, though, to the WNBA, you're not going to become an overnight success. It takes time to build stars. NBA going through the same thing right now. Ratings for the Western Conference Finals and the Pooper, down 16% when compared to Lakers Nuggets last year. When LeBron James came into the NBA, it took him years to become a huge draw on television. Go look at the ratings for his first NBA Finals against the Spurs. If I remember correctly... It was the least watched NBA Finals in history until LeBron broke his own record in 2020. It takes time to build stars. We are not even a month into the WNBA regular season. Will the star power of Katie Rue Clark rub off onto other WNBA players? I mean, it's definitely possible, but here's my two problems right now. Number one... This continued false narrative being pushed by the mainstream media and players and coaches in the WNBA that Caitlin Clark isn't the only reason for the WNBA surge in popularity, when the truth is, Caitlin Clark is the only reason. Not the primary reason, not one of the reasons, Caitlin Clark is the only reason. If you removed her from the league, the WNBA would be irrelevant. But that's not even the biggest problem in the WNBA. Biggest problem in this league is the same problem they have been dealing with for the last three decades, and more than likely, the same problem they will continue to deal with unless something drastically changes. Biggest problem in the WNBA? The product on the court is substandard. I know that sounds harsh. I know that sounds mean, but the truth doesn't care about your feelings. When compared to the NBA, the WNBA is offering a substandard product. But KC, that's not a fair comparison. Well, what else am I supposed to compare it to? It's the only comparison we can make. It's not fair comparing the XFL or the USFL or the UFL, whatever the hell they're calling it now. It's not fair to compare that substandard football to the NFL, but guess what? That's what people compare it to. There is so much competition on television today. Even with Caitlin Clark, games in the WNBA this season, they haven't broken into the 10 most watched games in WNBA history. I want you to think about something. Over the next week or so, Look at mainstream media coverage of the WNBA. Look at who they are covering. Remove Caitlin Clark from the equation. Count how many times the mainstream media is covering someone else. Then come back and tell me Caitlin Clark isn't the only reason for the increased attention in the WNBA. But give me your thoughts on this. Without Caitlin Clark, WNBA continues to struggle on national television. There have been a few outliers here and there. The anonymous faces, I think they drew 1.3 million on ABC after Caitlin Clark gave them a huge lead in. But for the most part, the WNBA is pulling big ratings on national TV because Caitlin Clark is the one being shown. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the media and other WNBA players are right. The league is succeeding as a whole, and it's not just Caitlin Clark. You tell me, though. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, and I'll see you guys later.